Hey guys, hello. Good afternoon, good evening, and um, maybe even good morning for some of you who might be tuning in from the other side of the globe. So wherever you're from, thank you so much for joining us here as we dive into a little bit of host coaching training with you. And as you log on, say hello, let me know that you're here, let us know where you're joining from. I would love to see where everyone's from uh, across the nation and on the world. So hi, Susan. Thanks for joining. Hi, Colleen. So I am uh, Laura Shagel. I am the one of the co-founders of Squee and also the director of communications. And I'm here to talk about host coaching. So I know a lot of you guys figure out how to um, become good at the system and how to use the mechanics, but it's a whole different ballgame being a consultant on it, right? So we're here to help. Hi, Tina. Hi, Jen and Susan. I'm so glad you guys are taking time out of your day to be here. We really, really appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to start because I do have a lot that I can get through today. And um, if you don't have a pen and paper, you may want to grab it just in case you want to take notes. Hi, Judy. Hi, Linda. So this is going to be a basic host coaching training. But I will tell you, it is not a basic squee training. It's not the most basic training that I could do. So that means I am assuming that if you're watching this, you've already run through an event and you have at least an idea of how you're gonna set one up um, and kind of have an idea of that. So if you don't, don't sweat it. You can definitely um, catch up. But if you are brand, brand new to squee, I'm gonna recommend that you start first by going to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash squee. And of course, if you're new to our spelling, that is S-Q-W triple E. And that's gonna have all of our tutorial playlists. And so if you need some help just kind of learning the system, that's your place to start. Don't worry, I'm gonna post the recording of this. So you can always come back um, when you're ready to start thinking about host coaching. So, little background on me, because it kind of comes into play here. I have a direct sales background. I've been in the direct sales industry since 2012, and I'm um, still active, and I use Squee for my parties. So yeah, Susan's been doing it since last June. I've been doing my parties on Squee since last, um, I think, March about. So um, definitely, I love working on this platform, and I've found some tips and tricks that are helpful. But but what I'm going to talk to you about today, this is my preferred method. That doesn't mean it's going to necessarily be right for you or right for everyone. There is definitely more than one way to do this. And so I just wanted to kind of give you that thought that this is one way to do it works for me, but I want you to find your own rhythm on here. All right. So anyway, let me tell you how I coach my hosts. And we're going to go through the who, the what, the when, and the how. That's how I'm breaking it down for you today. So we're starting with who. I often hear people as they're getting going on this, just kind of wondering like, how do I even find hosts that want to do Squee when they're used to um, Facebook? And so I think that's a really helpful place to start. And I'm gonna tell you, I think the very best way to get started on Squee, if you just haven't really got rolling yet, is by hosting your own party. First, by hosting kind of just a fake mock event for yourself, your husband, your friend, whatever, just to practice. I'm going to be totally honest here. When I hear consultants who are doing their very first squee event with the host and customers, I just get a little bit, I, I cringe a little bit for you guys because I want you to feel confident in your parties and your platform. And it's just going to take a little bit of doing at least one or two um, just to know how you run the whole thing. So make sure that you're giving yourself that chance to um, do a little bit of practice and then host your own VIP party with whoever your VIPs are, however you work your network, because um, that is always the best way to get bookings, booking off of a party. It's always the easiest way. Now that doesn't mean that you can't um, also reach out individually and ask people if they want to host. And so we're going to get into, like I was saying before, how do you talk to someone who has no idea what Squee is and get them excited about hosting it? So here's one tip that I, I personally think can be really helpful. 
um, is that watch out when you're talking to potential hosts about what I call guinea pig language. So that's something where you might say like, hey, I'm testing out a new platform, will you be my guinea pig? You know, there's nothing wrong with that. It could go over great with some hosts. But whenever we're saying things like that, we are kind of, um, we're letting them know that it's a little bit of an experiment, right? And so that can actually erode their confidence, even if it's just a little bit. And if you've been in direct sales for you know a little while, I'm sure you're very familiar with the idea of that the enthusiasm of the host is really a very important element of the party overall. So a confident host is an excited host. And so if you're using that guinea pig language, you just don't wanna hit on that confidence at all. So instead you can say, will you be one of my first hosts on this awesome, fun new platform? Um, rather than will you be my guinea pig or will you come test it out with me? So that's just my tip. I find that it tends to go a little bit better, but reaching out and asking. Now, when it comes to um, getting someone excited about Squee when they're used to Facebook, um, you definitely want to become familiar yourself with all of the benefits of Squee and how you can share that with her and her guests or him if you have a male host um, so that you're able to convey that. The more excited you are about the potential of Squee for everyone to hang out for the evening, for it to make shopping easier because they can star products right along with it. If you talk about how interactive it is with the games, when you're talking about that, again, you're getting that excited host and that's gonna pay off for you later. So make sure that you're getting in touch with that yourself before you start sharing it with others. So that's the who. Who will my host be? You guys, I'm sure you can find some people who would love to play around on Squee. So let's talk about what you're going to be saying to your hosts. Um, the first thing, I've already kind of hit on it, you wanna be talking to them with excitement. So number one on the what is excitement, explaining those differences to them. Like, hey, when we're on Facebook, we usually do this, and the reason I'm excited about Squee and sharing that experience with you is because X, Y, Z, all right? So if you guys don't know what those differences are, we can help you out. If you need help with language, let me know. I'm not gonna go into it um, right now because I don't want this to grow too long. Um, but start with number one, your excitement. That's one thing that you are saying to them. Number two is an expectation of an individual messages. So when I am coaching hosts, I am letting them know exactly how they're going to be inviting and that they're gonna be doing it through individual messages and that I will give them all the wording that they need to do that. Now, this is why I think it's really, really important to do individual messages for inviting for Squee. Squee is not a passive environment. And what I mean by that is Facebook is a very passive place, right? We sort of passively consume that content when we happen to be there for whatever else. And um, Squeeze not that way, right? They're coming, Squeeze built intentionally to be designed just for these events. And so they're not going to be on Squeeze unless they're at your event. So not a passive environment, passive inviting won't really work either. You need to be giving those, um, your hosts and their potential customers, your potential customers, um, a taste of that social experience, a taste of that connection, that um, relationship-based approach, right? It squeeze very much a relationship-based tool, and so that one-on-one -on -one messaging is going to bring you the best success on it. So I let my hosts know that um, I'm going to be giving them the wording that they need, and I will give them the um, event link to share. I'm gonna touch on that really briefly. This is a slight tangent. So when you're in Squee, you're gonna see that you can share the event code or you can share the event link. Where you see where it says copy event code, copy event link, that's all it takes to get that for your host. So you can copy it, paste it into a message to your host, and then your host gets to send that out however best fits him or her. So whether that is texting, Facebook messaging, if that's what they prefer, Instagram, on the phone, in person, they will have that information and they can invite. So whatever best fits them is what they can do for inviting, okay? So all you need to do is make sure that your host gets that event code or event link. And we're gonna talk about the timing of that in just a second. Now, event code, event link, 
that's up to you and what you prefer. People do it different ways, maybe in different situations. The event link is going to have the um, benefit of being the direct route straight to that host's party. So that can be really helpful for people. The event code can be more helpful in a verbal situation. So you can change your event code. You could make it their name or something that's very easy to remember. If they're in person, like they're doing the preschool run and they run into their fellow friends over there, that's an easier way for them to share it. The guest goes to squee.com and enters that event code. So um, yes, what Kim is saying is another thing to think about. So the Facebook is still Facebook, right? We haven't completely got away from Facebook if your toast is sending messages on there. So all of those Facebook rules that are you know, issues to begin with, um, they can still be an issue if you are sending out messages on Facebook. So if, you're se if your host or you are sending that link and they're sending it out really rapidly, Facebook's going to trigger that. So a code is kind of a safer route um, if they're going to be doing it all at once. Um, but again, the link is more direct. So it just really depends. If you have a host who is sending out links and then they have trouble with Facebook, you can give them the code and they can carry on with that and they'll probably be okay. So to each one works fine. They're just two different ways for them to get in. Um, okay, so another thing, third thing on the list of what to say to your host is you want to be talking about on-time arrival. That is one key difference about Squee compared to um, doing a Facebook party, for example, is that it's really best as a shared social experience where everyone arrives on time and goes through all the posts together. That's a pretty different experience and so they're going to have the best experience if they show up on time. Not only that, but people they're a little bit tired of seeing the same approach over and over and over again. So the fact of actually hanging out with people and having that experience online can in itself attract people. So that can be something that you include in your wording as well. But making sure that you're planting the seed for on-time arrival pretty early on and consistently planting the seed with your host so that you're also planting the seed with the wording that you give your host to pass along to their friends, um, that's pretty important. My favorite phrase to use when I am doing invite messages, of course, always ending with a question that to me is like the golden rule of direct sales. But my favorite question to end an invite message with is, can you hop on and join us at that time? Which is very different than saying, would you like an invite? Or do you think you can make it or things like that, right? I'm, I'm planting that seed right then that the time is actually significant. Um, so you can also, we've, we've talked about it in past trainings, I can talk about it in future trainings, um, more about how to build up on-time attendance. So if you haven't already, you can check our um, recorded videos and you'll see one that I did a few months ago. Number four on the list of what to discuss with your hosts is keeping a list for follow-up. So this is something that I'm, again, I'm planting the seed pretty early on that I'm going to expect my host to be an active participant in helping me with follow-up. So um, your host is your partner for sure. And just like a home party where you're going to be relying on them to be doing some of that follow-up afterwards, same thing with Squee. The more you have them involved, the more successful your event will be. I like to ask them to do that um, list for follow-up as well during the inviting stage. I'm gonna get back to that when I get to the when, because I'm actually gonna give you my timetable of what I'm saying and when. Okay, so um, that was number four. Number four was keeping a list for follow-up. I'm telling her that early on to make sure as she starts getting those yeses that she's actually creating that list. And then number five, when you are coaching your host for on expectations at the beginning, you wanna set the expectation that she's going to be sending reminders to join the event. I think that this is an important point. Um, Squee does send automated reminders for anyone who has opted into them. However, no matter what platform I have worked on as a consultant, I never rely on notifications from that platform. You know why? Because people just tune things out like that, right? We have so many notifications on Facebook that we really couldn't expect people to necessarily see them. Same thing on Squee. You may or may not actually be seeing that email come through right at the time that you need them to see it. 
but what they don't tune out is a message directly from their friend. So that is how you're going to really make sure that people are actually coming to the event. You can set that on-time reminder again. I often offer an on-time incentive. Um, and so that's something that she can mention in her reminder messages. So I do try to give her something a little bit new to say in that reminder message so that she's extra motivated to send them out because she feels like she needs to um, send that. Okay, so Jackie, yes, you can see who RCPs. That's going to be in the event info page on your SQUI um, dashboard. And Holly, it is not mandatory to provide a phone number or email. And we do that intentionally because we really want to make SQUI something that doesn't scare anybody off, right? We don't want them to have to set up an account to attend. We don't want them to have to have a download. Squee is truly an opt-in system. And that is really for the health of our industry and the reputation of direct sales that, you know, if they want to, they're able to provide that information. A lot of us, uh, myself included, I built uh, questions into my RCP that give them the opportunity to give me their text number, and most of them do. Um, so I now have contact information that I can work with. We talk about that a little bit in some other trainings as well. And any questions that you guys have, if you want me to dig deeper into a certain topic, let me know and I'm happy to hop on. I picked host coaching because I saw a lot of questions about that coming up, um, but we'll be moving through some other topics as well. Okay, so um, that is just an expectation that I set with my host that they are going to be doing reminders for me about, you know, 15 minutes before the event. Um, five to 15, somewhere around there. You don't want to be too far in advance because, um, you know, we all, mom brain, it happens to a lot of people or whatever, ever, life, life happens and um, we can forget as soon as we remembered. So we try to do those on-time reminders pretty quickly. Um, okay, so Christy's thing, is there a way if, if someone RCPs and they forgot to fill out the survey to go back in? Yes, up until the time that you open the door. So um, if you're brand new to Squee, you may not have yet realized that you do need to actually click on start event in order to open the door and let your guests in. That is because that same link, we wanted to make it simple for guests, right? They only need one link. That makes it simple for hosts, simple for guests. That link to begin with will take them to their RCP survey. Once the consultant has clicked start event, that link instead takes them into the event. So until you click that, they're going to see the RCP screen. If they've gone there before, it's going to say, I mean, if they have not gone there before, it'll say click to RCP. If they've gone there before, it'll say update RCP. So they can just click it and go through it again and update anything that they need to, Christy. Okay, so I have gone down through the who and the what. Um, we're going to talk when now, and this is where it might be helpful to have that uh, pen and paper handy if you want to emulate the system that I use. Um, and again, different different strokes for different folks. You may find your own system, but this is one that works for me. So this is my timetable. This is basically um, a system that I follow with all my hosts and um, I try to kind of stick to it as much as I can. So I generally start the process of host coaching seven to 10 days in advance. Hey, we've all had those parties that we booked um, four days before and that's okay. I just crunch it all together and we make it happen, right? Um, so my ideal is usually seven to 10 days in advance. So this is what it looks like. I'll try to make it really digestible. At the time of booking, I'm just sending, of course, thank you, I'm so excited, that kind of thing. Um, usually within a day, so by the next day, I'm sharing a little bit about Squee. If they haven't been on there before, even if they have, I am messaging them. Um, I try to do this one by voice message because I usually have a, a fair amount to say about Squee, as you can imagine. Um, and I also want them to hear my enthusiasm because I am starting to ignite that in my host from the start. So I try to send that by voice message and I'm just gonna say, hey, just wanna share a little bit um, about what to expect on Squee so you know what to expect and you can help your friends as well. Um, and then I go into everything that I'm excited about with how awesome it is and how it's different, how they're gonna want to show up on time, that kind of thing, okay? so. Um, that's the like the day after. That's um, what I call what is Squee and my expectations of my host, which is a lot of what we, we covered in the what section, okay? Seven days out, I have set up my event. So I've set up my event. I went through the required fields, event title, event description. I selected my business, time, date, time zone, and uh, event code if I wanted to change that. 
And those are, those are the all required fields. I've also added in the not yet required, but works for me at this stage. I've added in my RCP survey, okay? Oh, and I've done the host page, which is what we're getting to right here. So the host page, you click and it launches a separate window. That is because we wanna make sure that your host can go edit it if you want, if you want that. So I actually, um, I usually pull her Facebook profile photo or him, most of my hosts are, are hers, so I'm going with gender bias here. Um, but I'll pull a Facebook photo, profile photo and I'll put in sort of a dummy welcome message as a sample for them. Um, then I message my host, that's at that seven days out, and I just say, hey, I, you know, I've got this set up for your RSCP page, and um, I, if you wanna go make some changes, I'd love for you to personalize it, feel free to change the photo, maybe share something that you really love about the product, that kind of thing. So I'm doing that seven days out so that she's able to update that. Let me look at these uh, questions before they scroll back. Um, let's see. No, Heather, you know, honestly, if they've booked from a SKU event, I still run through it because they may have their own ideas about what they liked about the SKU event, but I have some really strategic things that I like about it that I want in her head um, so that she can share them with others. So even if they've booked from a SKU event, I usually will kind of run through. Like, as you saw last night, we do this kind of thing, okay? Holly, if you have not had a lot of luck with people um, filling out the RCP survey, I would recommend taking a look at your wording that you are sending to your host um, when you're sharing that link and also the timing of when you're sharing the link. So that's something that I think maybe we'll get into in another week, but um, if you wanna share your wording later on, I can take a look and see if there's something that might encourage people to um, fill it out. I actually, I, I went back through, I looked at a lot of my um, past school events and I usually have about 70 to 75% of my guests filling out the survey. Okay, so uh, let's see. So that was seven days out, sending the host page link so that she can go edit the host page. Six days out, I'm now saying, okay, as we discussed, this is how we're gonna handle inviting and um, here's the wording that I want you to send out. So I, I encourage them to personalize it if there's something that they can add in there. I think it's fabulous to personalize, but I have a really good starting point. I don't want to leave it completely up to her because I know that I'm the expert in this business and I kind of know what the guest needs to hear. So I'm definitely sending wording and then I'm telling that host, um, so as you're inviting, just keep a list of um, everyone that, you, that says yes because you're going to want that list later for follow-up. So again... I am planting the seed that that follow-up is gonna happen. And I want that list, because she's gonna need it for the um, on-time reminders, the notific you know, the um, party starting soon reminders, and then she'll want it for follow-up as well. So I, this is a difference, some people do it differently. I personally, I've tried it both ways. I like to hold the link. I don't actually give out the link or code until my host has reached kind of a certain guest count. So me personally, I tell my host to continue messaging until she's got 25 who have said yes. Um, I will open up events that are fewer than 25, but not until I've gone through a couple of cycles of trying to help her figure out who to invite, maybe invite a few more, some new wording, that kind of thing. So if I can tell that my host has really put her effort into it and this is just kind of what her network is interested in, then I'll open it up. But otherwise, I like to hold the link because I find that um, keeping my host focused on just the guest count tends to work better for me. When I give her the link to send out right away, now she's got two tasks that she's doing, right? She's sending messages, she's also responding with a link, and that to me tends to um, result in slightly smaller parties. So I've just kind of learned that I like to hold the link and keep her focused on one task. That task is um, inviting, and then when we get up to that certain count, then um, I will send the link. Okay. I'm getting off my timetable here. Sometimes I like tangents, so I'll try to stay on track for you guys. So uh, let's see, so that was um, six days out, okay? Five days out, I actually touch base and I say, hey, you know what, one thing I love to do in SKU events is make them personal. I wanna make it personal to you and I really want to um, kind of put a little spotlight on the products that you love. Would you mind sharing maybe your top um, five or six products with me. 
Um, so I actually put that into my Squeevent. I have a post where I plop in a host image so that her face is present in the party and for her friends, making that personal connection. And then loaded under that post, I have her favorite products. Because you know what, I, I like to build up a lot of trust as a consultant. I think that most of my party guests do have a lot of trust in me. But I will never be as unbiased of a voice as the host is. So I like to bring her into that experience and make sure that her favorite products are featured as well. So that is something that I'm covering on day five. It's also kind of just like a little um, knock, knock, I'm still here, you know, I'm making sure that she's still remembering that she's doing this party and on track. Um, okay, let me see. Um, am I also texting who? Let me scroll back up, Kim. Um, I can, there is actually a host coaching sort of timeline in the files of Sweet Life. So take a look at that. It's not a script. So it is something that you would want to branch from, but it gives you kind of an out, basically a structure like this. So that can help you out. Um, okay. So four days out, super important part of the process. I'm checking on invite progress. I don't leave this to chance. Um, I don't just watch an RCP number. I know exactly where my host is at. Um, and that's because I'm asking. So I will go back and say, Hey, how's your inviting going so far? Um, how many people have said yes? And um, I do like to use that so far term quite a bit because again, I'm all about planning those sort of subliminal messages. When I say so far, that's implying that the process isn't done. So if she comes back and says 10, you know, that's, that's great, but that's so far, we're still inviting, right? So if she comes back and says, eh, not so good, I only have two, um, I go into what I call bossy cheerleader mode. So I am really upbeat with my hosts all the time and it doesn't matter what results they're getting, I am going to celebrate it like they're doing awesome. So if they come back and say, oh, two people, I will just be like, great, that is so cool, you've got two more than you had yesterday, hey, doing awesome. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and send maybe 15 to 20 more messages. Actually, I kind of jumped the gun. In between that, I ask her how many, questions, how many messages she has sent so far. And that is a really important question because that's where you're going to actually get a feel for whether they've messaged a ton or maybe they only have two people because they only messaged eight. And then you know you're not gonna get a big fat party if she's only invited eight people, right? So that's where I start asking about, you know, can I help you look at maybe different groups we haven't thought about so far, um, that kind of thing. So we're starting to go back through it. Okay, so that was four days out, checking on invite progress, so that if it's not going well, I'm correcting that and getting it back on course earlier rather than later. Three days out, I am messaging my host and asking her about joining so that I can grow my team. And then um, two days out, I like to provide a graphic that she can share on her page. I think it's great to kind of make that announcement to her friends, but announcing is not inviting, and so I wanna make sure she's done all of the invite messages we need to first, and then that post is sort of just like a net to catch people that maybe she missed. Um, so we do put that up there. It's also a little reminder for them if they forgot it was coming. Um, so that's what I do um, two days out when it comes to my host. One day out, I'm checking back on invite progress again. Just have to make sure that we're still right down to the end. This is one of the beauties of Squee. Because there isn't like a lot of pre-party fuss that's going on. I'm not worried about anybody missing anything. So I can focus on attendance all the way up until the event. So even the day before, we are still working on attendance. Two days out, um, Debbie was when I send a graphic for her to post on her wall. Okay, so one day out, I'm checking on that event progress again, and I'm also um, reminding her that we're going to be sending out those um, reminders and that I will give her wording the next day. So the day of, I'm messaging my host, giving that wording for reminders, making sure that she is doing that. Um, typically, by this point, I have also collected a fair amount of customer um, contact information through my RCP surveys, and I'm usually in conversation with many of them at this point, but I'm still putting it on my host to do her reminders. Um, and again, that, that whole thing, working in RCP survey, contact information, that's a whole other training, so we can get into that later. Um, 
Christy, are you asking about the wording that I would use with my host or for that post? Those are kind of two different things. Um, okay, so day of, my host is sending those reminders. Day after, I'm going to be contacting the guests and saying, you know, thanks so much. Sometimes it's thanks for coming. Sometimes it's thanks for your order. Um, those personal conversations, you guys, I know for some people it's a little bit of an adjustment because you're used to putting up a thank you post in a Facebook party. Um, but that personal relationship saying thank you in a personal message, so, so good for the longevity of your business and building up your network. Um, so definitely I am doing that. I'm asking if I can help if they haven't placed an order. So that is um, the, the day after. And then I close my events um, 48 hours afterwards. So I have my host doing a check-in on that last day before it closes. Um, so that's my when, that's my general timetable. Um, Ivy, those chats that I'm doing with guests, they're actually outside of Squee. So I do talk to guests personal messages inside it during the event, but beforehand or afterwards, that's either text or Facebook message, however I have managed to get connected with them. Um, okay. Kim, the way I'm reaching them, it's actually in my RCP survey. I give them the opportunity to um, sign up for a text message reminder from me if they want it. Most people do want it, and then I just do that um, manually on my own. So um, I actually use Google Voice. I have a number through there, and it's great because I can just um, type it in rather than doing it on my phone. So I like to do it that way, but that's um, how I'm doing it. I'm collecting the information through there. And my RCP question is entirely related um, to, you know, would you, you know, I, I tell them about my on-time arrival incentive and then say, so you're really gonna wanna arrive on time, you know, would you like me to, have you set an alarm in your phone or would you like me to remind you by text? In a nice way. Um, but that's basically what I'm saying in there. And so most people do provide their text number there. I'm also working during the party to funnel that information. So I'm giving them the opportunity to join my VIP group. Um, I do that in a way I kind of gamify it. I use the emoji badges and I assign a, um, a little emoji flare to them if they've joined my VIP group. So that's kind of a fun little game for them. But it's actually intentional on my side, of course, because I want to get them into a place where I can continue to work with them um, in that passive environment. Okay, so um, the last thing I wanted to cover is how. <laughs> how to be successful on Squee with host coaching. And um, this is not so much, uh, you know, real tangible tips as just things that I want in your in your thoughts. Um, and one is that what you did previously, it just may not be effective on Squee because Squee's different. And so you do need to be open to doing things in a different way and, you know, open to that learning curve. And again, what works for me may not work for you. I hope that this will be helpful for you, but it's probably going to be a matter of finding your own rhythm. So you do need to be willing to try things out Take a look at them, see what worked, what didn't, make some adjustments, um, and kind of go from there. So that's kind of just how it goes with learning something new. Um, some people choose to do a squee event in tandem with a Facebook event. So they will set up the Facebook event um, and launch from there. I don't. I do purely squee. I find it just much more simple um, for me. It's less work for me, but it's also more simple for the guests. Um, but you definitely, there are people who have success with doing it um, in tandem with a Facebook event. So if that's a helpful bridge for you, and it was a bridge for me, the first, I think, two events that I did, I did that way. And then I realized, yeah, actually, it's not really, I don't need it. Um, but that's one way that you can do it. If you do do it that way, I would really, really recommend that what you post up on that Facebook event is very minimal. Um, basically, educating them on what Squee is about and what to expect, and we have a good video for that, um, and then the event link to get there. That's probably about all I would do, um, just because you don't want people to feel like they've seen it and don't need to join you there. So, and you also, just from consultant to consultant here, you don't wanna be working two angles at once, right? Like if you have to put a bunch of content on Facebook and you gotta go do it on Squee, you're kind of double dipping there, and that's just more work. So. If you decide to do a Facebook event in tandem with your Squee event, I would just keep it minimal. And again, it's what works for different people. I, I don't do that. I just stick to Squee and it works well for me. 
Okay, so um, that's kind of what I wanted to go through here. And um, I think I might do a whole second training because I don't want to talk for too long all about what happens when you go off script because there's going to be some troubleshooting involved, right? You have a host who comes back with you with two people. What do you do with that? You know, how do you get that RCP count up? Or maybe you got a good RCP count and you didn't get a lot of people there, you know? So there's a lot that we can look at in terms of um, troubleshooting. So I'll go ahead, I'll schedule um, a live for next week and we'll talk about some of those troubleshooting things. But I hope that in the meantime, this will help get you on the right path for getting some hosts, getting them up and rolling, and having a system for coaching them through how Squee is different and why that is fundamentally a very good thing. Thanks guys for joining. I know there's a couple questions I missed, so I will go back through and I will um, catch them in the comments, but I so appreciate you watching. I know that um, you know a lot of you feel like, oh my goodness, I have a lot to learn here. So thank you so much for having um, that learning heart and being here and ready to absorb more information and um, really become masters at Squee. I know you'll do it in no time. So thanks again. Bye guys.